hunger in man. There's a hunger in man. It's the spirit of God that fills that hunger. And I'm saying that the many people you have in your church, they are called. You have to tell them. I say you have to tell them. I say you have to tell them. Amen. You have to tell them that they are called. They can do something for God. Don't just leave them sitting there. Tell them. Tell them. Let them believe themselves that they have been called. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So that's the first thing that you have to know. I told you I was talking about five facts about the call. Number two, there is a call to fruitfulness. What is the call for? It's a call to fruitfulness. Hallelujah. It's a call to fruitfulness. And there's another miracle scripture here. If Christians will follow this scripture, I tell you, you will, need, you will always receive a 100% answered prayer. John 15, 16. It's a miracle scripture. It says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. To be chosen is also like to be called. We will come to that later. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. Ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Your fruit should what? Should remain. And this week, you are going to be taught how to make your fruit remain. That is a great shepherd. How to make your fruits remain. Then what happens after that? That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This is 100% answered prayer. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. There's a miracle scripture out there that many people are ignoring and they are shouting and they are calling on God and they are not getting answers. If God is lying, try this scripture and see. The interesting part of this I gave an illustration earlier. It's when you have a house help. You bring the house help into your house. You bring the person for a purpose. That's why I said that you have not chosen, but I have chosen you. We didn't choose God. It's God who has chosen us. He has called us. He has not just called us. He has also ordained us. And this ordination is not wearing a gown and things and being poured oil. No, no, no. It's a spiritual ordination. What we do in church is to bring certain order into church. Amen? But he said, you, he has called you and ordained you for a purpose. The purpose is one and it's only one. And to remain the same purpose, that purpose will never change. I said that purpose will never change. It's just like what we read earlier from Ephesians 2.10. We have not chosen. He has chosen us and ordained us. And he has ordained us for a purpose. That we should go and bring forth fruits. So many of our church members who are suffering, going through challenges, this is a miracle scripture for all of them. I said, this is a miracle scripture for all of them. You know, <laughs> very amazing, Bishop Ogo. Since last year, since last year, conventions that I've had in my church, we invited prophet Makai and the recent to, to Bishop Pius minister in the, in the program and it's very amazing anybody God reveals anything about a person to the person, the first question is what do you do in church one person don't do anything the prophet didn't mind him, He's, you know Mr. minister to him yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't do anything in church no no then this word is not for you <laughs> The word was for only those who were working in church. I'm telling you. I mean, I said, I've not told him anything. But he himself just 
And Bishop Pearl did the same thing a couple of weeks ago. So even now people, uh, pastors have to, oh, no, no, he, he, he's, he's a shepherd. He's a shepherd. <laughs> Before the word comes. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> and that's the scripture in Malachi chapter 3. Look at Malachi chapter 3 verse 16. <laughs> I think verse 16, I think. Amen. 17. <clears throat> it says, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. As a man spareth his own son that serveth him. As a man spareth his own son that spareth, that serveth him. Verse 18. Then shall ye return and descend between the righteous and the wicked. When you say wicked here, it's not somebody who is going about killing people and doing abortion. You, know. you remember the, talent of, the parable of the talent? Wicked and slothful servant. Yes. Then shall you return the same between the righteous and the wicked. Between, now, after he's explained it, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. So at the end of the day, there will always be a difference. And I'm saying that the way for our members to be blessed without sweat is taking the yoke of Christ. That is the way our members will be blessed. Taking the yoke of Christ. Let us raise people who work for God. Amen. That is you and I. That is why God ordained pastors, prophets, teachers, etc. So we edify the saints. So the saints do the work of the ministry. We are missing out on our calling. And the thing that we are supposed to do. But I'm saying that in this conference, we are going to teach you what to do. To raise people. And a people, an army for God. You would have done your responsibilities. That is the response that God gave Bishop Dark. That's how I come today. I'm also here. And I'm not a selfish person. What has been made to me, if Bishop was preaching to us prosperity and riches and things, do you think I'll be here today? No. At a point, I worked in Takradi for two years. On my six month. I just joined, on the first year, I just joined the church like a year ago. My pastor called me and said, Bishop said I should start a branch. I've been in the church for about just a year. I said, I'll start. So I started the branch. Within a year, my company transferred from Takradi to Accra. Any good man or sensible person will say to my pastor, pastor, I've been transferred. I have about 30 sheep. Could you please get somebody to handle it? But I said, this opportunity, I will not let, not let it pass through my fingers. I left my family in Takradi. And I was working in Accra. Because I needed some motivation to go to Takradi every weekend. Every Friday. Every Friday. Every Friday without a fail. I closed from work at the gold house. By 5, 5.30, I set up. And those days, customer traffic was something else. I get to my house in Takari like 10 a.m., 10 p.m. Of course, I'm happy. I've seen my wife. So I'm happy myself. The following day, the morning breakfast, then I go to my church. Follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. Music rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. We come home. My wife was in the uh, cathedral. It was in the uh, Apache. I was in the branch. Sunday morning, I go to church. After church, meetings, 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 counseling. I go to the head office, meet my senior pastor, Bishop Hamish. One, two, one, two. I go home. Monday morning, 4 a.m., back in my car to Accra. I did that for two years. 100, 200, 104 weeks without fail. Because somebody told me that I am called. Amen? He told me I am called. And I am called to do what? I am called to be fruitful. I am called to be fruitful. I am called to be fruitful. Hallelujah. 
As I stand here, I don't deserve to be the bishop at the Kodesh. I don't see what about me that will make me the bishop at the Kodesh. But God sees sacrifices that we don't see. I say God sees things that we don't see. That the place that Bishop Dirk sat to minister for years, I'm the one there. It's a miracle. I say it's a miracle. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The call is a call to fruitfulness. Amen. It's a call to fruitfulness. Let your people know that they are called. And let them know that it's a call to fruitfulness. Let them know there's a scripture like John chapter 15 verse 16. That you have not chosen me but I have chosen you. And ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruits. And that your fruits should remain. So it is one thing bringing forth fruits. But like I said to you, we were not called to just bring forth fruits. But we were called to make disciples. That your fruits will remain. That is where the hard work is. My wife says something in tree. He said, "O Christo, ye no, and ye ding, ne yo no. O Christo, ye no, and ye ding, na so ne yo no. Yes, that you may bring forth fruit. That's ne ye no. That the fruit will remain. Ne yo no. Ha. On the juma no wo. Hallelujah. But you and I are going to rise up to do it. I say, you and I are going to rise up to do it." And we are not going to rise up alone, but we are going to rise up with every human being that God has given to us. Hallelujah. I say every person that God has given to us, we are going to rise up with them to do it. Don't allow somebody in your church just to be a singer and this and no. We are his workmanship. Everybody that God gives to us is God's workmanship. And he, God is the one who has chosen us. So he has chosen you he has chosen the members that he's given to you. That we will all go and bring forth fruits. And that our fruits should remain. Then lies the 100% answered prayer. Whatsoever. 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 There are people in... You see, instead of having couples quarreling in your church and you wasting time counseling them, tell them to go do witnessing. Saturday, they tell, I tried it in Zimbabwe. To one couple. They were always fighting. And I said, no, I will not counsel you. I don't, I don't waste time on counseling people who are fighting. Saturday, go and do um, witnessing, outreach. Hold your wife's hand every four o'clock, go and do outreach. And see. <laughs> Within a few, a, a few weeks, their marriage was back, uh, you know, back, back to back. Yes, their marriage was back and alive. It was back because they sit down there quarreling. This one has put on TV watching boys say, you're always watching boys, you're not talking to me. Okay, put the TV, all of you, hold her hand, go and do outreach. Go and do what? Outreach. You don't have to pray for your marriage to work. You have to work for your marriage to work. I say you have to work for your marriage to work. And that is the work. You've been praying for your marriage to work. I say that is the work. You have not chosen him. He has chosen us and ordained us. So the call is a call to fruitfulness. Hallelujah. May the Lord make us fruitful. I say, may the Lord make us fruitful. I say, may the Lord make us fruitful. In the name of Jesus. And like I was sharing to you about that, um, the pastor went to heaven. The wife did not recognize that the husband has married. I mean, he didn't register in heaven. <laughs> if you think your marriage has been registered, you, you, are, you are joking. Your marriage has been registered, so you are spending all your energy and your time on your marriage. Heaven does not recognize it. It doesn't recognize it at all. It is your step of faith. That is what heaven recognizes. Your step of faith. That is what registers in heaven. So the man marrying the wife didn't even notice it. Didn't, it didn't register. It wasn't seen in heaven. It's only works of faith that register in heaven. So when the husband grew in the Lord, oh, it registered. The wife noticed it. But the marriage... She yeah. are. It's not scoring. I say it's not scoring. Even chickens marry. <laughs> Clap your hands to the Lord. Number three. 
Some people are called in a spectacular way. Because you may see yourself say you are not called. Some are called in a spectacular way. Are you with me? Some are called in a spectacular way. Like it happened to Paul in Acts chapter 9 on his way to Damascus. It was very spectacular. Amen? But it's not everybody who is called in a spectacular way. As a matter of fact, majority of people are not called in a spectacular way. See, the apostle Paul was called in a dramatic and spectacular fashion. But you see, when you come and think of it, when you come and think of it, what would have happened to you if you had died an unbeliever? Then what, whichever way you are called, you will see that a spectacular, spectacular thing. Yeah. If you come and think of what would have happened to you if you were not born again. The hell that you have been delivered from. And you will see your call as something very important and spectacular. It's not only seeing visions. But think about the alternative, what could have happened. Then you see that, yes, God has really, really saved you in a spectacular way. So you don't joke with your salvation. Are you with me? I said, are you with me? Yeah. Wonderful. Number four. Some are called in an ordinary way. First Kings chapter 19, verse 11, 12. It says, And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. That voice that when you were in the service, and the pastor said, if you want to give your life to Christ, lift your hand. And then you lifted your hand. That voice that in the service, we say, if you have lifted your hand, then rise on your feet and you rose. That voice, it's like something said to me. It's not something. It's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I say what? It's not something. The Holy Spirit. Because many people lift their hands. Or in the face of many people who go to church, not born again, don't lift their hands. But you lifted yours. Many people after lifting their hands, when they say come forward, they don't come forward. But you went forward. Just because there was a still small voice. Hallelujah. That is the call of God on your life. Amen. That is the call of God on your life. And I'm going to talk about it later. How important it is. Amen. And what it means. Because many of us don't fulfill. If I, if I had not joined this church. Bishop Ogo, I always think about it. Because I was a nice brother. Where I was. Very nice, brother. Paying my tithe very faithfully. Every time there's donations, I, I do my best. Like Brother Dennis here. <laughs> so if I had just ended it there and not come into this, I would have been very amazed that in heaven God will open a book and will show me what you could have been the plans I had for you. The plans I have for you. The plans I had for you. One scripture that has guided my life is Jeremiah 29, 11. I caught this scripture in 1979 or so. And I've never left this scripture. I've held on to it as if God was speaking personally to me. And as I have worked with God, I can see it unfolding. And I'm standing here preaching. It's amazing. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's amazing. It's a privilege. Do you understand? If I, 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 I can give you 10 reasons why I shouldn't be here. I can give you 10 reasons why I shouldn't be here. Even the fact that I'm walking. He knows. I'm here and I'm walking. That alone is a miracle. I can give you 10 reasons why I shouldn't be here. And I could have given excuses. Just like when I was leaving Takrade to come to Accra. I said to my pastor, oh, Charlie, They've, I've been transferred, though. 
And I would have been a very nice brother would have done anything wrong. My company would have transferred me. I'm going. I mean, is it wrong? It's not be wrong. But I just let my family in Takoradi. So I can always be going back to the ship. And I did that for two years. The miracles that God gave, if I'm to share. You know, I was working in the mines. And I was working at the gold house. By virtue of my position, I was entitled to a rent of, say, $5,000 every month. By virtue of my position. Hey. Oh, yes. Because those days, airport residential, yeah, that's where we're staying. <laughs> now, because I wasn't with my family, I was staying in my sister's small flat somewhere. So it meant that all this money came to me. And that's how, that's how I started my, building my house. Wow. Two years. Calculate and see. <laughs> I didn't know about this arrangement. But just by that, take, taking that decision, that's the blessing that was awaiting me. It, it was even funny because I was also entitled to a security man. So I was staying in my sister's flat at Sakumono. And then there was a security man sitting in front of the door. Because I was, <laughs> I was entitled to a security man. <laughs> Why did I told my HR, look, I don't need this security man. It's a whole block of flats. And he's sitting in front of my door. Money, he comes... Then by six, another person come and sit there. This house, I'm not inside. I'm here Monday to Friday. I'm always at work. I just come home to sleep. Weekends, I'm gone. There's nothing inside this that my five chairs are aware in the week. So what is this thing that they're doing? So just by taking that decision, the blessing that came into my hands. So when he says that you have not chosen, but he has chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruits. And that whatsoever, your fruit should remain. Whatsoever you ask the Father in his name, he will give to you. And I'm saying that that is the message we should teach our people. That there's a call. And that call is a call to fruitfulness. Amen. It's not a call just to come and warm the pews in church. It's not just a call just to be a nice person in church. But it's a call to fruitfulness. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So you could see people are calling spectacular way, number four. People are called in an ordinary way. And I'm saying many of us are called in an ordinary way. Number five, some people are called through their desires, your desire. Some of you like girls, that's your desire. So you are called and maybe to reach out to ladies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. When I was in secondary school, form, one, form 